रजिस्ट नाउ हेलो जिया चिल्ड्रेन नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट session of our brand new series bio bites in 15 minutes well honestly speaking can't call it brand new anymore right we've had quite a number of sessions in the series by now and today we are going to be talking about human reproduction which was part of the class 10 cbse chapter how do organisms reproduce and this is ambika your biology master teacher right here on this amazing platform of vedantu okay guys let me just remind you just in case you've not subscribed to our channel yet please click on the subscribe button right now because we intend to do more and more of such innovative and interesting series that will make your learning process a lot easier okay and let's move on and start with a positive quote make yourself a priority well this is something that i also very recently learned because many times it sounds like it's a selfish thing but it's actually not unless you are a priority to you to yourself you can't do justice to anyone else in life think about it and try it out let me know what you think of it as well and let us get started with the male reproductive system jumping directly into the uh, content that is exactly what we intend to do in this series right so here we go starting with the male reproductive system we know that human beings um, exhibit sexual dimorphism right in the sense there are separate male and female individuals so the male reproductive system uh, starts with a pair of testes or testicles as as they are also called um and this is followed by a structure called the epididymis now uh, the testes if you actually look at it and if you recall if you remember this it is placed slightly away from the rest of the abdominal cavity in a sac like structure called the scrotum the importance of scrotum is that the temperature within the scrotum is about 1 to 2 degree celsius lower than the rest of the body temperature which is supposed to be optimal for sperm production so the testes the main function of the testes is to produce sperm and also to secrete testosterone the hormone testosterone responsible for the secondary sexual characters in male okay and then the sperm which are produced by the testes are temporarily stored in this in a structure called the epididymis temporarily they are stored there until they undergo maturation and they are ready for release now once sperms are mature they leave the epididymis or the epididymis as some people call it um this enters into the tube called vas deferens there is a pair of them but then this is the side view as a result of which you can see all of them very clearly otherwise a front view you would be able to see two testes and a pair of vas deferens as well okay so the tube which is called a vas deferens um carries the sperm away and um, on its way towards the exterior of the male body it mean it meets secretions from accessory reproductive structures such as the seminal vesicle and the prostate gland which add fluidy secretions helping in nourishing the sperm and also in um forming what we call the semen okay so sperm plus um secretions from the accessory reproductive glands is what we call semen so that it can be easily transported out of a male's body and then the vas deferens uh, goes further and further down and meets the urethra which is actually coming from the urinary system from the urinary bladder together they merge to form one single tubular structure which enters into the penis and opens to the exterior so there is just one single opening for the exit of sperm and urine in a human male okay so this is the basic structure once again starting with the testes um, placed in the scrotum epididymis vas deferens seminal vesicle and the prostate gland which are accessory glands as they are commonly called which uh, the vas deferens joins then joins to for to meet the urethra leading to the exterior uh, inside the penis okay now coming to the female reproductive system now just like the testes in males females are also made up of a pair of gonads which are called ovaries okay ovaries are responsible for the production of ova or egg cells okay and also they are responsible for the secretion of the hormone the female sex hormones estrogen and progesterone 
Okay. And then once the ovum is released by the ovary, uh, it is received by the fallopian tube. Always remember, um, while there are millions of sperms which are produced in one round of ejaculation, as far as the female reproductive system is concerned, uh, there is only normally one egg or one ovum which is released by either this ovary or this ovary every month. One egg per month. Okay. And this ovum um, exits the ovary when it's formed by it and enters into the fallopian tube. Fallopian tube acts as the site of fertilization where the sperm meets the ovum. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you about that in a little while. Um, anyway, that's the function of the fallopian tube or the oviduct as it's also called. And then we have the uh, uterus here, which is also called womb in simple language. Uterus is the thick sac like muscular, highly muscular structure um, in which the growing fetus develops. Okay. Uh, and then this opens into a tubular structure called the vagina through a tiny opening called the cervix. Okay. This vagina is what we call the birth canal because it's through the vagina that the baby comes out at the time of delivery. Okay, so ovaries, fallopian tubes, uterus, cervix and vagina, these are the major parts of the female reproductive system. Now coming to fertilization, wherein the sperm meets the egg. So uh, if sperms are released inside the female reproductive tract during a sexual act, um, what happens is that too, if the time corresponds with the ovulation period, which means um, there is an ovum present in the fallopian tube, it is sitting there ready to meet the sperm. So the sperms, if released at this time into the female reproductive tract, they swim further and further up this way. Like from here, once they are released here, they just swim further and further up uh, all the millions of sperms and they move on until they meet the ovum inside the fallopian tube. Okay, this uh, process by which one sperm, at the end of it, it's only one sperm which meets the egg, which we call it fertilization, sperm meeting the egg. And this results in what we call the zygote. Now, the zygote, of course, it is a single cell. We were all uh, formed like that. All sexually reproducing organisms start their life as a unicellular zygote. This undergoes further rounds of division, splits into two, four, um, eight, 16, 32, and so on. Anyway, once it, um, yes, this is zygote formation. Once again, for you, the sperm and the ovum fuse together in fertilization to form the zygote. Now, once the zygote has uh, developed, uh, divided and uh, formed the eight cell stage, which we call the blastocyst, it moves further down and gets implanted, gets embedded inside the uterine wall. This process is called implantation and it's after implantation that we say pregnancy is established. Okay. And then further and further developments uh, of this structure continues. It develops into the embryo after the 8th or 10th week or so. After the 10th week of pregnancy, we call it the fetus. Until uh, delivery, we call it the fetus. Okay, so this is what happens in implantation. And then, of course, as I told you, further and further development keeps happening. The period of pregnancy, we call it gestation. Okay, just in case you're wondering uh, or just in case you might come across this term anywhere, gestation. Okay, in humans, it's normally uh, approximately about nine months and a little more than nine, a little more than nine months, actually. Okay. So uh, this is also about a gestation, like during this development, the fetus, the growing fetus um, receives its share of nourishment and oxygen and all of that from the mother through an intimate connection, which is called the placenta. So placenta is a tissue, one side of which um, is contributed by the fetal tissue and the other side of which is contributed by maternal tissue. OK, so this is all right here. Uh, what happens is? From the mother to the fetus, nutrients, uh, oxygen and all of those would get in. And what does the fetus do? From the fetus's body, whatever the fetus doesn't require, all the waste, or, uh, waste substances, carbon dioxide, excrete and everything, go through the placenta into the mother's bloodstream and gets released thereafter along with the mother's bloodstream. Okay, so this is how important placenta is. Very, very important. Okay, children. All right. Now about parturition. Now at the end of gestation, the baby is delivered. We call that process of childbirth by technical name parturition. 
Okay, so this is how it occurs. It's usually the head that comes out first, followed by the rest of the body. All right, so just in case, um, in a particular month in the female reproductive cycle, the ovum does not get fertilized. I told you only if ovulation and um, the release of sperms into the female tract happen around the same time would fertilization occur, right? Just in case that ovum, uh, after being released, it does not get fertilized it gets released out of the female reproductive tract through the vagina in the form of blood. So basically what all? It's not just the unfertilized egg. It is a uh, menstrual fluid uh, is comprised of the unfertilized egg along with the inner lining of the uterus which is uh, formed fresh uh, every month in a female uh, reproductive system. Um, so we call it the endometrial lining. The endometrial lining along with uh, the unfertilized ovum, uh, some mucus and some blood vessels all shed, break down together and move out in the form of menstrual fluid. Okay, so this roughly uh, occurs uh, every 28 days or so and the duration of uh, one round of menstruation can be anywhere between two to seven days. Okay, so the entire session for you in a bite size, remember human, female and male show sexual dimorphism. Male reproductive system has testes as the primary reproductive organ. Remember, IS is singular, ES is plural. Okay, um, which produces gametes called the sperm. Extremely important. Female reproductive system has ovaries, which are the sex organs or the gonads or the reproductive organs, which produce ova or eggs. And then sperm and ovum are haploid cells. They combine together during fertilization to form a zygote. And this undergoes further development. Placenta helps nourish the growing embryo. And then menstruation is the flow of unfertilized egg along with the fresh uterine lining as blood and mucus through the vagina. All right, so this is the entire human reproduction uh, for according to the CBSC class 10 syllabus um, in a bite size for you. And children, do remember, uh, we have got amazing courses. Vedantu Pro subscription is always there for you. Just remember to visit the link in the description box uh, below and the pinned comment as well. And remember to apply the coupon code AMBPRO to avail the best discounts. And children, do remember to click on the like button if you have enjoyed this and found it useful because that's the way of telling us that you would love to have more and more of these. Please, please, please do share it with all your friends because I'm sure everyone will benefit from this. It's not a very difficult task to uh, watch a video which is just about 15, 17 minutes long and learn something from it, right? So do share it and stay subscribed, as I told you, to the channel Vedantu 9th and 10th English. And of course, do continue following me on Instagram, also Ambika underscore Vedantu, okay? Do remember this and until we meet again in yet another amazing session, do remember to take care, stay happy and stay healthy. Bye-bye.